Hey, welcome to a tutorial on ASP.NET Web Development. In this video and the following videos, we're going to learn more about the Razor programming language, or the mixture of Razor and HTML. And so this application is what we're going to create. So you're going to see several features in the following tutorials. First of all, you can see we have a list of people. And so we're going to talk about classes and how they integrate with a Razor web page. Next, we're going to talk about Razor, which is the kind of programming language that would blend C Sharp code and HTML. And that's how we create pages in the uh, ESP.NET framework. You can see along the top of the screen that we have one of these navigation bars. This comes from Bootstrap. So we'll learn how to install Bootstrap. And also, uh, we have two different ways to show our list of people. And the preferred way that I've chosen is to show a grid view instead of a table view. But we'll do both. So those are some of the things that are coming up. So first of all, what's Razor all about? As you can see on the screen in front of us, we have an example of Razor code. So Razor is a Microsoft language that is used to generate HTML code. It has to run on a .NET server to work. Now, a web page contains a mix of Razor code and HTML code, so both tags are listed here. In this example, you can see that in every place where there is an at symbol to begin the code, this is called the, uh, you call it the Razor code. And for example, we have a list of products, as you can see on line one. And then in this case, we are creating an unordered list. In the list, we are going through a for loop. And then for each item in the for loop, we want to print the name, description, and also the price of our product. And you can see also, you can put if statements into the code. So that way, if the unit price is, is zero in this case, we will print the word free. Otherwise, we will print the actual number of the unit price. So if you want to see the full documentation for Razor, I have the link pictured here. Now, this is a tutorial that will get you started on some of the most basic things of Razor, and it might be enough for all you need for your application. But certainly, there's a lot of things that you can do in this language, and we won't cover them all. All right, let's get started in Visual Studio and create our project that will demonstrate all of these wonderful features. So I'm going to choose Create a New Project. I'm going to choose the Application Framework for .NET. Choose Next. And let's call this thing customers. That's what I'm going to be displaying here. Or you might use activity4 might be a good name. So we will change uh, nothing here for the results and click create. Now in the previous example, I had you create the MVC template. This time I'm going to choose empty. So we're going to try to create everything from scratch, which will help us learn more than just following the pre-coded design. So there's no authentication chosen. I will check MVC so that we'll create the folders for us and then we'll cr click create. All right, it looks like the project is up and running. Now you notice when you open up the Project Explorer that there are no views and no controllers. It's an empty project. And so we're going to create these from scratch. In previous tutorials, there were already three views and several controllers to pick from. Now, in the MVC format, we have to create a model, a view, and a controller. We're going to start in the middle with a controller. So let's do a right click and choose Add and a new controller. So I'm going to select Empty and choose Add. Let's name this thing as Test Controller. So the default code is created for us. We are going to have a action then called slash test, and it will return some view. Neither the route configuration nor the view exists yet, so we still have some work to do before this controller will work properly. All right, so now the first thing I want to do is define a route so that this controller will work. Let's go look in app start, and we do have the file called routeconfig.cs. And there is a default route that we've got already programmed. I'm going to duplicate this, so I'm going to copy and paste it. So for this route config, I'm going to define the route test, and the URL will be brackets test. I will keep the controller name as test, and since there is an action in the controller called index, we can leave this alone. So check over at the test controller, and the action result for index does exist there. 
So that's all we have to do for this controller. Now let's move on to create a model. So let's right click on models and choose add and let's do a new item. I'm going to choose a class. So I'm going to select code, class. For the name of this, I'm going to choose the word user model. You could probably call it customer or user model. Let's choose. So for my users, I'm going to add some properties. So let's set up three properties and we'll choose string for each of them. Let's pick name, email address, and phone number. And remember, you can type in the word prop and press tab two times to create a property automatically. Let's next create a constructor for this property. I'm going to do a right click and choose quick actions and refactories. You can see from the shortcut, you can also press control and period. Now what's my choices here? I want to generate a constructor. You can also generate some other code, but we'll save that for a future. So these are the properties that I'm going to include in my constructor and choose OK. So you can see that now the constructor shows that we have three parameters and they are all defined as the properties here. So notice the distinction. Lowercase name is the input and it is defined here. So a programmer that is new to this might think this sounds strange where you have email address equals email address. Just to be clear that these are different, I'm going to name these as N, E, and P. And now when you'd come down to the properties, we can name these as N, E, and P. Now it's not necessary to do that, but it just enforces or reinforces the fact that parameters are not the same as the members of a class. So we could probably get fancier than this. We just have three string properties. You could add booleans and integers and other kinds of data types. But for right now, we'll just stick with string. The next part is to create a view so that we can display these people. Let's go to the test area inside of the views folder. I'm going to right click and choose add and make a view. Well, let's call this thing test. So let's check the rest of the options here. So the template, it says without model. I don't want that. I also don't want to generate a bunch of predefined code. I would like to keep it empty. But this time, I'm going to choose the empty that says nothing about model. This allows me to select a model. And sure enough, I have a model in the list called user model. I'm going to uncheck the layout page because I'm trying to generate everything from scratch for learning purposes. Let's click add. So here is our view. We can see at the top that we have the user model and there's no layout. And then it generates some basic HTML code. Now there are no razor statements in here yet. We're going to add those ourselves. So that our view has some content, let's add a headline and a paragraph. So I'm going to say amazing news story. You won't believe your eyes. This site will become the most viewed page on the internet if everything goes well. Now, since this thing is called test, we need to tell our, our controller how to view this thing. So let's go back into our test controller. And now it says in our view, there is no page specified. So it would be expecting to show the index page. Well, we created the page called test. And so that's what I'm going to put in as a string inside of the parameter. Now this should be able to display a page. Let's go ahead and run it. So the application is up and running and you can see the error. I don't have any routes configured for the root, so I need to put in slash test and that will bring us to the controller called the test controller. And of course it's pointing to the view that we just created, our amazing news story. So this is a good point to stop. In the next video we're going to create some actual interaction between the list of customers and the page that we're looking at now.